What's good, y'all? Welcome back to Go Reality once again. But we got a crazy ass case for this one. One of the most messed up ones in recent history. So strap on, get ready for this crazy ride, cause we get right into it, you dig? Between March 24th through March 29th, back in 2011, several transportation buses that was heading to Reynosa, Tamaulipas were hijacked in San Fernando. This was done by Los Zetas. And what will happen next will become known as one of the most senseless, horrifying and brutal mass killings in recent history. The events of what happened that night were published on a Mexican newspaper called El Informador, which attributed all accounts to an anonymous survivor. But I'm surprised someone actually survived. These accounts also come from the cartel members themselves. After some of them were caught and arrested due to the connection to this event, then they began talking and in detail saying everything they did, saw, and participated in that night. So as the bus driver was leaving San Fernando, he saw at a distance that there were several trucks blocking the highway up ahead, and that there were several men wearing ski masks and holding AR-15s. The gunman ordered the bus to stop, and the driver obeyed. The cartoon members approached the bus, yelling and cursing and hitting the bus with the guns and pulling the guns at the victim's side. And once they got in, one of the gunmen yelled, you are all fucked. Every single passing in the bus was frightened, scared, begging for the life, already crying. How would that feel to you? Some of them already knew what was coming already. The Qatar members then ordered the bus driver to drive the bus down a long dirt road for about 10 kilometers until they reached a large field plain, basically in the middle of nowhere. Dark, no one can find you, no one know where you are, and these cartel motherfuckers just with big guns and just screaming at you the whole time. Fuck. In the area they were in, there were about 20 luxurious trucks and about three buses. Some of them were flat tires, broken windows, and bullet holes. Obviously, the cartoon members were in the luxurious trucks. They're known for that, riding around town in fancy ass foreign cars and shit like that. Heavily modified pickup trucks. The driver was told to stop the bus, and every male in that bus was told to get off. They were asked to form a line, but then the cartoon members began separating the oldest from the youngest and the weakest from the strongest. The ones that looked too old and too weak were separated from the group, tied at their feet, and taken somewhere else. The ones that were left were told to take their shirts off and stay in place. A man wearing a black military uniform, bulletproof vest, and a kit belt was called from the trucks parked nearby. Other trigger men referred to him as Commander 40, better known as Miguel Trevino Morales, or Z40. I made a video about that crazy motherfucker a while back. So y'all should check that video out and know what the fuck he about cause, cause he's the one that orchestrated this whole thing cause he was still the boss of the Zetas at this point and this was his orders. He called for the whole thing to happen. So he approaches the passengers lined up outside and he asked them in an energetic voice, let's see assholes, which one of y'all want to die tonight? But no one answered. There was a teenager also lined up that began crying and he wet himself cause he was so nervous. Commander 40 then shoots him in the head with a pistol dead. He then turns again to the men, but this time yelling, who the fuck wants to live? But then this time all of the men raise their hands. Z40 says, good, we will test your abilities to see how capable you are. If you make it, you will survive. If you do not, you're fucked. He then asks his henchmen to bring the bats and the clubs and each of the passengers was given one. But it wasn't just bats and clubs, it was bats, knives, hammers, metal posts. And then he says, look, each one of you will get in Paris and beat the shit out of each other. Those who survive will work for Los Zetas. Those who don't, well, they're fucked. Every passenger was shocked. Could not believe what they have just been told to do. Every passenger grabbed their batting club, joined up as a pair, and stared at the partners nervously. Z40 then said, now beat the shit out of each other. Fucking ruthless. One of the passengers then approached Z40, weeping and crying and saying, please sir, I do not want to do this. I will give you all the money you have in my own house, but please let me go. Z40 stared at him firmly, took away his club, and said leave and while the crying man was walking away z40 swung his bat and hit him in the back of the head but then struck him 20 more times until his head was completely destroyed and that shit was gone that head was blending in with the floor every male passenger then started fighting several other zeta members who were still on the bus with the other passengers then ordered every single woman whom they considered the most beautiful to exit the vehicle so they could rape them then it took away their children from their mothers and shot the rest of the bus passengers they were taken to a warehouse where several other women were already being held captive and in the dark room they were being repeatedly raped and tortured coming from the other room they could hear women and children crying as they were being dumped into acid barrels acid barrels children where well, there's nothing left no bones no teeth no nothing they were most likely dumped in head first also so they could drown in the acid and make it a quicker death hollywood couldn't make this shit up no movie scene could make these scenes in real life 
they can't recreate that shit. He wouldn't want to see that anyway, you feel me? Or hear those dying pain screams. Some victims were handcuffed and made to lay down on the dirt road. One of the bus drivers was then told to turn the engine on and to run over the bodies. The bus driver first was frozen, stuck in place, not knowing what to do, not trying to do what he was told to do, but with gunmen next to you pulling a gun at you, telling you that they're about to shoot you if you don't do that. They want other options you got. So the bus driver proceeded to run over all the bodies, killing everyone that he ran over, and then he too was shot in the head right after. They really made that poor man just run over a bunch of people, killing them, just to kill them right after. For no fucking reason. Can you imagine the sound people make when they get run over by a one, two ton huge ass bus? You feel me? Like, what sounds could you make? All you hear is probably cracking noises and just people just moaning and shit, exploding and shit, popping heads and all that. Right after the bus driver was dead, the gunman set the buses on fire. Z40 gathered all of the Zetas and said, We had enough fun for the night. Bring me the winners. His trigger man there brought him all the ones that had passed the gladiator-like competitions and were all gathered in front of Z40. Z40 then said to everyone, Welcome to Los Zeta Special Forces, the other military. Now let me just say this. All of the men that supposedly quote-unquote won that night, they most likely died soon after. You feel me? Because... They weren't taken in as regular Zeta members. They're the ones used for the suicide missions, like being sent out to the rival neighborhoods and shooting up the whole place knowing damn well they will die. They weren't being used for anything significantly important. They were used for the dirty work, for the dirty jobs that the real members did not want to do. And there's still no clear reasoning as to why the Zetas went and did all that, but a cartel member of theirs actually said that it was due to fear. Fear that the cartel rivals were recruiting more and more members in them and will soon overpower them. So they did all that in fear of what they thought could have happened. You feel me? They threw babies in acid, made the men fight each other, ran over the elderly, raped and killed and tortured the women to prove what? Like, you feel me? Like, it's it's really, you know, in this cartel mindset, they just want to show the most intimidation, the most violent, the most ruthless. And the most ruthless they are down there, that's how they get the most respect and power. On April 6, 2011, Mexican authorities found 59 bodies in 8 mass graves in San Fernando. By April 8th, they confirmed finding 13 more bodies, which brought the total body count to 72. On April 10th, in 4 more mass graves, 16 more bodies were exhumed, increasing the death toll to 88. The investigation continued, and on April 12th, the Mexican military confirmed the finding of 28 more bodies up in the death toll to 116 and the mass graves up to 15. By April 16th, the authorities found six more bodies, making the death toll 122. The next day, on April 14th, 12 more mass graves were found with 23 bodies and the body count reached 145. Most of the bodies showed signs of blunt force trauma to the head. 16 police officers from San Fernando were arrested for allegedly serving as accomplices to members of Los Zetas in the slayings. Now that comes as no surprise. Police officers, military, government officials, they all take bribes from the cartels. It's easier that way. They get to live that way. They get paid, look the other way, and don't gotta worry about the motherfuckers coming after them, you know? On April 21, authorities found 32 more bodies in eight other mass graves. The death toll went up to 177. Five days later, on April 26, the body count reached 183 and the mass graves found now numbered over 40. 74 suspected killers have been captured too. By this date, only two of the 183 bodies have been fully identified by authorities, and around 120 bodies were sent to Mexico City for identification. And then finally, on June 7, 2011, the bodies found in mass graves in the municipality of San Fernando stopped at 193 corpses. One U.S. citizen was killed in the massacre. With this case already being over 10 years old, and most of the bodies haven't even been identified yet, it's pretty safe to say that they will never be.